Dear students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and today I begin my discussion with digestion and absorption, in other words digestive system. You all are aware of the fact that we eat food and food goes to elementary canal. That means if we want to study digestive system, we must study the elementary canal first in terms of parts, in terms of functions, in terms of secretions. Our elementary canal begins with mouth and ends with anus. If you see carefully, anatomically it is almost outside the body because it is exposed on both the sides. It is passing through our abdomen but it is almost outside. In fact, the elementary canal is connected to each and every part of our body through blood vascular system. Again beginning with mouth which is the first part of our elementary canal or GIT or gastrointestinal tract. In mouth you have teeth, you have tongue, you have salivary glands, teeth are four types incisors, canine, premolars and molars and you have a tongue which rolls food between the teeth and also on the tongue you have many papillae and some of them are bearing the taste buds. That is why when you eat anything you are able to appreciate the taste. It is sweet or it is bitter or it is sour you are able to identify because you have different areas on your tongue which will tell you what taste it is. So they are taste receptors. Salivary glands secrete saliva which contains enzyme salivary amylase and helps in digestion. So children let us appreciate the fact that digestion of food begins right in the mouth. And that is why it is advised that masticate your food for long time in the mouth. So digestion will eventually begin in mouth itself and hence you will put less pressure on uh, your stomach and intestine for digestion. You can see in the diagram that mouth leads to a pipe like structure called esophagus. Esophagus is followed by stomach which is a big pouch. It has different areas, cardiac stomach, pyloric stomach, fundic stomach and stomach continues as small intestine. The initial part of a small intestine is not very coiled and hence rather it is U shaped and hence it is called duodenum and after duodenum a straight part is called jejunum and after jejunum begins a coiled very very coiled and very long ileum or small intestine. A small intestine will be followed by large intestine and you can again see in the diagram it is also known as colon you have ascending colon you have descending colon and you have a transverse colon and colon will continue as rectum and rectum will open to the anus. The point where ileum or small intestine joins large intestine or colon that point is called cecum and cecum is the place where we harbor bacteria which are useful for us. At the same point comes out appendix which is vestigial organ for us but it has evolutionary significance our ancestors and those animals from whom we evolved had it quite developed. We do not need it, hence it is not developed, but its mere presence indicates the evolutionary significance. Now let us 
talk about some sphincters. What is meant by sphincter? We know esophagus continues into the stomach. So, at that point you will have one sphincter, esophageal sphincter and its job is, its function is that it will not allow food content to move from stomach to esophagus. We know when we eat food from mouth it goes to esophagus and from esophagus it will go to stomach. It should not come back to esophagus and that is the work this sphincter will do because it opens to one side and not to the reverse side and hence backward flow is stopped by this sphincter. Similarly, between stomach and the duodenum we have a sphincter. We call it pyloric sphincter because that part of stomach is called pyloric stomach and now this will not allow food to revert back to stomach from duodenum because as a rule food should move from stomach to duodenum not other way. So, other way should not move for that we have the sphincter. The most important sphincter we have between a small intestine and large intestine at the level of cecum. It will not allow movement of food from colon to intestine food should move only from a small intestine or ileum to colon. Now, imagine if you are vomiting for some reason, then whatever contents are coming out through your mouth belong to either stomach or duodenum or ileum, not after that. Because of this sphincter between ileum and colon, the material in the rectum will not come through alimentary canal and then come out through your mouth in the vomiting. Otherwise, the whole thing will come through mouth and how bad it will look and how bad it will sound. So, after digestion which reaches rectum cannot revert back to ileum or the other parts of the alimentary canal. So, role of sphincter in our alimentary canal is very, very important and the muscles of all parts of alimentary canal are especially designed to have peristalsis. Peristalsis is the pace, a particular speed through which food moves from one part to the other part of alimentary canal. Again, it has significance. Once you eat food, it gradually goes down and is collected in the stomach. It should not immediately move forward, otherwise digestion will not take place. When it reaches a small intestine, it should not move through small intestine in a very fast speed otherwise absorption will not take place and when it reaches rectum again the speed should not be fast otherwise we are visiting toilet all the time. So, this pace this peristalsis is very important if the wave of peristalsis is very fast you have diarrhea and if it is very slow you have constipation. This is about the parts of alimentary canal in addition I would like to say we have associated glands to the alimentary canal namely liver and the pancreas. Liver secretes bile which helps in handling the fat which we eat and pancreas secrete all the three enzymes which can take care of all the three major food products like proteins, carbohydrates and fats. Going forward. I would like to give you the list of alimentary canal parts in a particular order. Starting with mouth which has teeth and tongue and salivary glands, then buccal cavity, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, jejunum, ileum, colon, rectum and anus. Teeth in your case are diphyodont. What do I mean by this term diphyodont? Di means always two. So, you have two sets of teeth. When you are born you do not have any teeth. Gradually teeth develop and they are called milk tooth and they remain till 
certain age 10 or 11 and then they start dropping one by one and the new teeth will take the place and the space and these are now permanent teeth. So, because we have two sets of teeth we call it diphyodont arrangement and we all know that how important teeth are for us. We can cut uh, food, we can tear it, we can uh, masticate it, we can grind it and this all happens because we have four different kinds of teeth in the mouth. If one or two teeth are not there, then you can imagine the difficulty in eating and tasting the food and that is why I suggest all the children should take extra care of health of their teeth. A stomach which is very important organ, its secretion part, its functional part we will discuss little later. Now I am discussing the structural part. It has three clear parts, cardiac stomach, pyloric stomach and between the two fundic stomach. So it is very clear that esophagus is ending on cardiac stomach and there we have esophageal sphincter and pyloric sphincter is continued as duodenum. It is present between pyloric part of stomach and duodenum. So, pyloric stomach is the part which will continue as duodenum. Duodenum is U shaped part area in the alimentary canal which is important for the simple reason that it allows the duct of pancreas and duct of liver called hepatic duct to end on it. Through this the secretions will enter inside the alimentary canal. Stomach also has very thick walls because churning takes place here and because of churning the food becomes very fine particle. We always ask you that masticate your food for a long time in your mouth so your stomach has to work less. If you do not put your food for a long time in the mouth and you go on swallowing it without masticating much, then your stomach has to work more to make it fine. Unless it is fine in shape, it cannot be acted upon by the enzymes. Coming to small intestine, which is a very long one, coiled one and highly folded. Stomach is little folded, but intestine is highly folded. These are called villi and the purpose is to increase the surface area which is very important for the purpose of absorption because absorption will take place through these villi in the small intestine. That is why these villi are supplied by blood vessels and lactales. Blood vessels have blood and lactales have lymph. The food we eat is converted to glucose, proteins converted to amino acids these two will be absorbed by blood whereas fat molecules are very big in size cannot be absorbed by blood capillaries they will be absorbed by lactales lymph vessels and lymph vessels will finally pass it on to blood vessels. Also I would like to tell you that there are many glands in the small intestine which secrete digestive juices details of it we are going to study in uh, uh, next episode, but for you this is enough to know for the time being that unless those digestive juices are there, the final digestion cannot take place. So, small intestine is the place for digestion and also absorption. So, children you have understood about buccal cavity that is mouth, teeth, salivary gland, tongue, esophagus, stomach and small intestine. Thank you. Thank you.